What's up, everybody? It's the homie Truth Teller, the street reporter. And a lot of people ask me about the drill culture. A lot of people know I'm a drill historian, so they run up on me and ask me things about the drill culture. I'm always asked, Truth, if you get an opportunity, can you get a legend in front of that camera? Somebody who know about the drill culture, somebody who a part of the drill culture. Today, I was lucky enough to get that opportunity. Now, for the people who must be blind, because you didn't hear to been hitting your eye too many times, you don't realize who in front of this camera. Now, for the people who don't know what's going on, you'll let them know exactly what your name is and where you're from, bro. Malaro, Southside, Chicago. Um, CEO of Laws Incorporated. Um, you know, normally when I have a lot of like younger guys from Chicago in front of that camera, they scream out like a neighborhood where somebody lost their life and they kind of put that name in front of the hood or something like that. Uh, you rep like the whole Chicago. Absolutely. Right. Um, I, I want to know something though about that because people do do the neighborhood things. Do you feel like that kind of divided the neighborhoods and shit like that, screaming out hoods and things like that? I think there's a time and place for it. Right. You grow. You know, it was a time and place where you do yell out your neighborhood, and then the neighborhood grows, and then you yell out the city, then, you know. Right. You know what? Like when I speak to people in the drill culture, because I got a drill board at the house, I write all the drill information on it. So if I ever get a chance to run into a person from that community, I know what to ask them. I got a drill board, and when it comes to your name, it's a legend. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Laro, you've been in this shit for a while. You know, how did you start in this? Um, with music. Yeah. Wanting to do it and doing it. You know, rapping myself, DJing myself, making beats. You know, arranging songs and just doing music and then stopping and getting money and going back to it, never letting go of it. Just having a passion for it, just loving it, loving right. the culture of it. You know. Like Child of hip hop, so I always love the culture of it. You can't you just get back to it. Right. You know, you, you seem a little older. When you first got the bug for music, drill wasn't around. No. Right. When did that come in? Um, Drill came in when we carried the torch, carried the flag, you know, and they classified it. You know, we didn't want to classify. I didn't want to classify it. And then when I figured out, it was being classified. I went super hard mm. when I understood that uh, what was being done and the efforts was creating a sub-genre of hip hop. And media was throwing it out there to me, asking me what, what is this drill, this drill hop you got going on? And, right. and I'm like, I don't, uh -huh. I, don't, I don't like that. And they was like drill music. And I was like, I what like do you mean by classified? Classified means when they, box something in. I didn't, I didn't want to try to box it in and segregate it, you know. Um, I was more so wanting it to just be heard. So segregating that meant that someone would put it in a box and say they don't want to hear anything of that sort. I didn't want that to happen. I wanted it to be heard, so I didn't want that to happen. And then when it happened, it was kind of dope. Right. You know? But that's what that's what happens when you, when you really push something. You don't notice what's going on. You don't notice, you know, your achievements with it, you right. just pu you pushing it, you know. Did you know what? I still deal with the, the pain and sacrifice and that went through pushing it. Just you know to even recognize a lot of things that come along with drill music. Did you see it, it going when you first was starting? Did you see it getting to here, or you just thought this was like some shit for the hood? I seen it getting past here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, it's cool going to get past here. Who invented it? Who invented drill? Because some people tell me you and your team invented drill. I hear some people say Pac Man invented drill. I hear some people say King Louis is the first drill artist. Some people say Chief Keith is the father of drill. I got legend in there. Who invented drill? Drill music comes from Pac Man. Pac Man is the father of drill. Pac Man is from Grove City. Pac Man is from um, Louis Neighborhood. Pat Man passed. Um, Pat Man was about the lifestyle, the culture. I never met Pat Man. I didn't have the privilege of meeting Pat Man. Oh, um, I did have the privilege of understanding what he was doing and understanding where it came from 
and the standing the torches he was you know laying which was the street music from chicago that i understood that he understood that it you know everyone understood from the streets of chicago pat man was ready to push that and i seen when i, when I heard louis and I heard the cadence and I heard what he was speaking of and I did my research. Because I had to do my research, I was spending money with it. You know, so I did my research and I seen that hit his go. Music that I believe in, that's art imitating life and what I see and what I know is going on. I, I hear this in his music. So I was ready to do whatever to get that music heard and get it out there. Right. Um, um, and, um, and then, I, like I said, I wasn't looking at who. It just, you know, this happened. Right. It happened, you know, we pushed, I pushed it, just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. You know, we're going to get back to King Louis because I find that dope. You know, I got some things about the Louis thing. But I, I, another thing I want to know as far as with Pac-Man, was he real famous, like, as far as on the rap side? Did people, like, give him his flowers? I don't think Pac-Man get his flowers. I don't think a lot of guys get their flowers from Chicago. And the things that went on to spark what everyone sees now um that's just the case you know i wanted to know that because i hear a lot about pac-man you know i hear a lot about he's the inventor of what people are doing now you gotta get you gotta get fat smack on here you gotta get um um boss on it uh boss shorty on it you gotta get his people on here mm. i you contacted know, I fat Max. i still contacted him we're gonna try to get some talk to his people in their story mm. you know he has he has a story you know he was signed to, um, I think it was Red, it's on E. Oh, so he, he was signed. He was signed, yeah, he's over there with oh. L.E.P. now. Okay. You know, you got a lot of guys that came in early on as execs putting money behind artists and working in Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, and working, you know, the music in Chicago. You know, what I, what I will say is, I notice a certain style, I notice a certain style of music that I want to just get behind and push. And it just so happened to get classified as drill. Okay, now that you said that, I'm glad that. Because you was behind Louis too. Yes. Okay, did you, I'm glad that now. This is the one I want to know. This is the million dollar question I got to ask you. Did you, was it hard selling Louis? Because that music wasn't really out yet. I remember, I'm the man, little did they know. That's what you're talking about, that when that hit, that shit was hard. It was hard selling. It was hard selling Louis. It was hard selling the culture. It was hard pushing street music from Chicago at the time. Um, we we fought our battles. You know, we fought our battles. Definitely, you know, fought a lot of battles to get that music heard. You know, it was more so keeping it clean, keeping it safe. You know, trying to show that it wasn't. You know, keeping the gang banging out of it. That was important. That was important. That was important. So. It was important that the things I pushed, I made sure, you know, wasn't too much gang on the game, the gang banging wasn't in it. You know, because we from Chicago, we in Chicago, getting pushed in Chicago, you hearing different things, yeah, you know, we know what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, we know what it is. So, I had to get past them barriers. You know, the thing is, when you get past those barriers, you get to another layer where it's executives and people on the high ups, they don't understand what's being said. Mm -hmm. they, that's, the, that's where the disconnect happens. Um, I want to ask you something. I don't know if I'm crossing the line when I ask you this, but I want to ask you, and I'm going to ask you without being police, but I am going to ask you. In Chicago, and I don't want it just to say Chicago and just try to make that side look bad, because it happens everywhere. But out here, kind of feel like Chicago to raise the hand for this question. And, you know, in the last two years, there have been over 13 people that's considered rappers that have lost their life where did that come from? Is it like something with the rappers, money on their head, they still in the hood? Or what, what's all that about? Art imitate life. You know, um, my opinion, you know, just what I feel is, you know, what comes along with fame and money and power, you know, is a responsibility. You know, some people get groomed, in, you gotta get, get groomed into that and get groomed into the responsibility of that. You know, once you get fame, power, respect, money, things of that nature, you have an influence. With that influence, things can go left or right, you know? Mm -hmm. So it goes into that, I think it goes into, you know, teaching and talking to and things of that nature, nurturing, 
instead of bashing, mm. you know, when we see things go wrong, a lot of times, it go wrong from bad practices, that's all. Mm. You know, the pressure, feeling like, you know, you gotta do things and this is how things gotta go when you're in position to do them that way. Mm. You know, not realizing that you're in position to make things actually change and go the direction you want them to go in when you have the power to do so. I'm glad you said that. That's another thing I want to ask you. Now that the drill coach have been going for a while, it's other jobs that opened up in the drill coach. At first, it was just rappers and producers. Now I see like comedians and all kind of shit. But I also see bloggers, okay? You one of the first people to care about the drill culture. You invested in the drill culture earlier when people didn't really want to invest in this shit. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like people, bloggers and shit, and how do you feel about them in the drill culture? Interviewers, I feel like, academics. I feel like um, what I recognized, which was early on, that providing a sub-genre for hip hop, um, would show that there was a passion for hip hop and a passion would show that it was individuals that was of the culture that was still promoting hip hop. You know, this just was a version of it, you know, mm -hmm. um, the things that, that what they really gravitated towards, which was the street music from Chicago that they broke down and said was drill, you know, which we okay with, we cool with now, you know, but there's a lot of us, you know, you one of them. You know, that, that embraced that, that street music from Chicago. Why? Because it was real. It was raw. It was gutter. It was unfiltered. It was truth. And the truth comes with no parental advisory sticker. Mm. So we felt it. Mm. I felt it early on when I knew what was going on. And I seen that this was our chance to finally get recognized in hip hop. You know, the way we wanted to be recognized in hip hop. I will say that. Mm. You know, people say Chief Keith messed the drill culture up. Do you believe that? No. Mm -hmm. He get no. a bad rap for that? Yeah. Chief Keith is Chief Keith. Chief Keith is a child from, a child from Chicago. A Chicago kid. You know, growing up to be an adult. He watched Chief Keith grow up in the spotlight. He watched Chief Keith grow up with fame. You know, he put money in a, in a, in a, in a teenager hand at that point. And they got power and influence that goes to what I was talking about. Right. You know, we watch them learn their lessons and, you know, we have financial education and financial literacy. Sometimes you watch individuals learn financial literacy and financial education through their mistakes with money. And some of these mistakes was publicized. That's it. That's all. Mm. You know? mm. That's deep, bro. That's real deep. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, Inc. What is that? Lost and Corporate. I mean, I know what that is now, but I want to know from you what is that. Lost Incorporated is an independent record label from Chicago. Legendary, um, though. Came about with a thought in my mind of just providing an outlet for individuals to go out there and be they self with a lawless mentality, meaning they wasn't afraid to be they self and worried about being boxed in, you know, in any kind of way. Mm. You know, with no stigmas or propaganda or fake things, but... We feel like we gotta follow some type of trend. I want to, you know, market and promote individuals that want to be they self. You know, and individuals from Chicago, street music culture was being they self. Mm. Let's get, let me know, let's be clear. They reported what was going on in these streets. They was being they self. Mm. I heard individuals such as my, like, felt what I felt ready to speak up and, and put they, you know, put they all into it. Yeah. You know, I want to know something about the drill culture, though. Another thing I want to know, um, do we get a bad look at is that? Is, do people look at the drill culture the bad way? You know, some people say that music is like devilish. It's evil music. Absolutely. They look at it in the way they look at anything that um, shows truth. Truth comes with no parental advisory stick. Uh -huh.